The next 24 hours are going to be dynamic, to say the very least, across our great state. There you see it. The complex low-pressure system out in the Tasman Sea. The swells are going to pound the New South Wales coastline, and you can see eight-metre swells out to sea, eight to 12-foot waves at your local beach. Here am I at Manly. Check out the surf behind me. It looks pretty epic. And here with a crew of people with... Uh, Matt, Josh, say hi, and Harrison. How's it going? Pretty good. <laughs> got some bad, good shots? Bad. Yeah, good some got some so far, so pretty clean. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can't wait to take my drone out and uh, get some epic shots, so let's get to it. What an insane last few days that was across Sydney with the East Coast Swell producing some mammoth surf. Probably the best surf I've seen this year so far. If you're new to this channel, my name is Chester C, otherwise known as Sea Shots on Instagram. In this video, I'm gonna talk about five tips on how to get surf photos using a drone. Number one, use ND filters. As I explained on my previous video, ND filters are essentially sunglasses for your drone that will take out any glare in harsher sunlight. Filters will also enable you to shoot video at double the frame rate during the daytime as well as being able to capture well exposed photographs. If you want to find out more about ND filters, I've put a link above where you can find out more about it as I do a comprehensive review and information on how to use filters with a drone. Number two, drone settings. Set to shoot multiple photos and in RAW. With surf photography, you have to treat it like sports photography. It's fast paced and therefore you need to ensure that you have a faster shutter speed. For drones such as the Mavic 2 Pro, you can adjust this. Anything over 1 of 1 20th of a second should be sufficient at a minimum. Set your drone joystick sensitivity down to get smooth cinematic drone footage. Here are my settings. With video, shoot in 4K if you can. If you want to slow down footage, make sure you shoot with a higher frame rate. Don't forget to shoot double the frame rate as well. With the Mavic 2 Pro, you can make it look as though you're flying closer to the surfer than you really are using the HQ mode in 4K, which gives it a nice crop, saving you from flying too close. Number three, position your drone for the shot. The best shots are shots where it looks back down at the barrel of the wave. You will need to fly backwards when filming video. Depending on whether the surface is surfing to the left or right, watch where the surface is surfing towards and position your drone further along where they first get on the wave. The reason being is that further along, the surfer will most likely air or cut back or even surf through a barrel. Try not to move around too much so that you can conserve battery life. Wait for them to come over to where your drone is instead of chasing each surfer that takes on a wave, thereby wasting battery. The same applies when waiting for sets. It's better to keep your drone still instead of flying around to save battery. Just like surfers waiting for the next set of waves, drone photographers will also need to wait for them for the next set. It takes quite a lot of patience. In terms of altitude, it is really up to you and how comfortable you feel with it. With the sea spray and swell when flying low, watch out for it. Drones will cope with some sea spray, but not when the wave hits the drone. When it comes to shooting, remember the same photography rules apply when it comes to composition and framing, ensuring that the subject matter is framed in a way that it stands out in the photo. Include some landscape in the background if possible to give some more interest. Number four, learn to read surf. Before I go on, let me just say this, that I am not a surfer. I'm not a pro when it comes to surf. However, I will give you the information that you need to know in order for you to plan ahead and to get out to take surf photos. So there are plenty of YouTube videos available that go into great detail as to what constitutes great surf and so many factors to do with it. I'm just gonna to touch a really high level overview of it just to give you enough information. So if you wanna criticize me in the comments, I've already said my disclaimer, so here it goes. Deciphering surf can be quite overwhelming at first, especially when you see surf reports for the first time. 
This topic really needs a separate video in itself as there is just so much to it and can get very technical. To keep it real simple, here are five things you need to take note of when reading a surf report. Number one is the wave height. The larger the wave height, the better for photos as it gives a lot more drama. Number two, wind direction. Generally speaking, you need the winds to be light offshore. Offshore winds are winds that blow from the land, that is offshore, towards the sea. This is good for surfing because the wind blows in front of the waves, making them clean to surf on and causing the waves to break slower. You can tell from afar that the winds are offshore when you look out to sea by the sea spray that you get on the top of the waves and the clean lines. Conversely, onshore waves are waves that are blowing from the sea to the shore. This creates choppy and messy waves that break quickly and therefore not so good for surfing. You can tell from afar that the winds are onshore when you look out to sea by the messy looking ocean. Number three, swell direction. The direction of where the swell is coming from will impact the location you go to capture surf. Generally speaking, you want the winds to be blowing in the opposite direction of the swell to have clean waves. Number four, wave intervals. To put it simply, anywhere around 10 seconds is a decent amount of intervals between waves for decent surf. Number five, tide. The tide will influence how the waves turn out and will affect your decision on where and when to head out to capture surf. More on this later. Now that you know what to look out for in terms of surf conditions, you can't just go to any surf break to catch decent surf. Early in the year, myself and a few friends decided to go out to a surf break in the northern beaches of Sydney to do some surf photography, since the forecast had predicted large surf with light offshore winds. <laughs> what just happened? Did you that? <laughs> no, I'm not oh, sure. For fuck's sake. Oh. <laughs> oh, <me too. laughs> Charlie, how's the uh, surf this morning? Look, I came down a bit late, but it's not as good as we kind of hoped it would be. Uh, the yeah. waves haven't quite arrived to the size that they were predicted, but still getting some cool shots. Um, good to see people are still out and about yep. in, the, in the water. So why didn't the surf turn out as good as expected? It's because there are so many variables when it comes to surf spots and whether they go off or not. It depends on which side the beach faces, it depends on the swell direction, it depends on the wind direction. There are so many factors to do with it. For example, low tide. Some places are much better at low tide, so therefore you need to get there at the right timing, otherwise you won't get the results that you're after. Every beach is different, every spot is different, depending on the direction of the wind and swell and whether the spot is actually protected from any onshore winds. Some spots are exposed and therefore the, any onshore winds will actually create bad surf. On the other hand, some spots are protected, so when one beach is actually not very good, another beach could actually be perfect. So it, it really varies depending on the wind direction and the swell direction. The reason why for us, when we went to this particular beach, it didn't work out is because the swell direction was not in favor of the wind direction. On another day, when the wind direction and swell direction is actually ideal, it would go off. So it actually pays to do research when it comes to this. I would recommend looking through surf cams before you actually head out there. There are various surf cams available across many different surf breaks, as well as a website called surf-forecast.com to find out more about each surf spot wherever you are in the world and what their most ideal wind and swell conditions are. In my case, I looked up a particular spot in the northern beaches of Sydney and went through every beach from north to south and I found this particular spot that was absolutely ideal, so I headed out there.
And number five, the last thing I want to go through with you is drone etiquette. In the same way as surfers have their own etiquette in the water, there is also drone etiquette when it comes to flying with other drone pilots above surfers. Make sure you adhere to local drone laws that's relevant to your country. And also when it comes to flying with other drone pilots, getting literally the same surf break, make sure that you communicate your height levels because otherwise you might risk getting hit and you don't want a mid-air collision and it's not ideal. Make sure you communicate your height. Make sure you state your intention as to what you want to do. Maybe even take turns getting different surf breaks. So long as you're communicating, you're gonna be okay and make sure your sensors are turned on as well. Otherwise, you're in for a mid-air collision and that's not ideal. <laughs>